Hello, in this video we are going to look at graphs of non-constant forces and in fact we're going to look at force displacement graphs, not force time graphs. Um, if, well we know that work is force times displacement times cosine of theta if we have a constant force. However, if we have a non-constant force then we cannot use we cannot use that because there's not one specific value for force. However, if we graph our function, force against displacement, then we can actually find the work done uh, because work is going to be the area under that force displacement curve, and it's going to be the signed area. So here we have a force displacement graph, and it's quite a complicated graph. We have a constantly increasing force for 2 meters, then a constant force, then zero force, then a constantly decreasing negative force, then a constant negative force, and then a, uh, a negative force that decreases to zero over this distance of about seven and a half meters. And if we want to find the total work, we're just going to look at the area under the curve. And since this is a nice graph, we can pretty easily find the area. And you notice it's basically broken into a few different sections. We have this first section, which I'm going to color in red. And that is going to be work one, I'm going to call it. We have this other section down here, which I'm going to label in green, which I'm going to call work two. Now to find the network, we can just find work one and also find work two. So let's, let's try and find work one using the area under the force displacement curve. Well, work one, um, that shape is a trapezoid, so we could use the formula for the area of a trapezoid to figure that out. Uh, the other thing we could do is we could break it down. There is a triangle here uh, and a rectangle, so we could add the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle. And that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle to get the total area. Uh, the area of that triangle is going to be, well, it's going to be one-half base times height, and the area of the rectangle is going to be base times height for that rectangle. For the triangle, our base is, well, it looks like it's two meters, and our height is 40 newtons. For the rectangle, our base is, well, it's also going to be 2 meters because it goes from 2 to 4 meters, 2 meters. And our height is still 40 newtons, 40 newtons. So we can see that the area of the first part is 2 times 40, which is 80, new, 80 divided by 2. So that's going to give us 80 over 2, or 40 newtons times meters, or 40 joules of work. The area of that rectangle is going to be just 2 times 40, which is 80, and it's newton times meters, so that's a joule of work. That means that our total work in this red section, work 1, is going to be 40 plus 80 is 120 joules of work. And it's positive work because our force is in the positive direction. It's in the same direction as the displacement. Uh, our green section... Actually, before we get to our green section, between four and four and a half meters, you may notice uh, that there is no force, and so that's going to be zero work in that section. So I'm just going to label that in my diagram. No work. And that also makes sense because there's no area underneath that curve because it starts off at zero. In our green section, W2, we have another trapezoid, and we can also break that trapezoid into uh, three segments as well, triangles and rectangles. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add up the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle, the first rectangle, or sorry, the rectangle, and then the area of the second triangle. I'm not labeling them in my diagram, but we have three of them there. And again, that's going to be one-half base times height plus base times height plus one-half base times height. Uh, for our first triangle, the width of that, or the width of the base, is one full meter. So it's going to be one-half times one meter 
times the height is actually, well, negative 40, negative 50 newtons. And we do need that negative sign. That negative force tells us it's going to be negative work. So negative 50 newtons. And then the area of our rectangle over here is also, well, the base is 1 meter. And the height is still 50 newtons, negative 50 newtons. And then this area of our last little triangle, the base is also 1 meter. So 1 half times 1 meter. And the height is still negative 50 newtons. So we can find the work done in each section. Uh, negative 50 times 1 times 1 half is going to be negative 25 joules in our first little triangle, plus 1 times negative 50 is negative 50 joules, plus 1 half times 1 times negative 50 is negative 25 joules. So our total net work in this green section that is between 4.5 and 7.5 meters is equal to negative, negative 100 joules. W2. And so if we want to find the total sum of the work, that's just going to be the, the network is going to be the total area. So the work from uh, 0 to 7.5 meters is just going to be W1 plus W2 equals 120 joules minus 100 joules, which gives us a total work, work net of 20 joules. So this is an example of how we can use a graph to find the work done by a non-constant force. And we can also talk about the physical meaning of this graph. In W1, we're applying a force in the same direction as the displacement. So that's going to be positive work. That means we're speeding up the object. In this middle section, uh, there is no work, so the object's going to be going at a constant velocity between 4 and 4.5 four and meters. Well, then, between 4.5 and 7.5 and meters, we are going to be applying a force opposite the direction of motion, which means we're going to be slowing down the object over those next 1, 2, 3 meters. So that's going to be negative work. Negative work slows the object down. And overall, we see uh, 20 joules of work, which means we're actually going to gain 20 joules of kinetic energy as well. Bye.